Well, hello, Rockafire fans, and you're about to see some samples from my premium video channel. And we're going to start with a 1981 recording session of Light My Fire. And, um, and the first guy you're going to see here is Sal, Salvador Alvarez, in his glory. In fact, this was his very first day as a full-time employee at Creative Engineering. Chuck E. Cheese should be lashed until he collapses. And then last for collapsing. <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese, it, it, we know uh, the perversion and blasphemy that they have committed to animation. And so our mission here today, right here in this studio, and is studio. to crush them under a huge foot. <laughs> the creative engineering boot is seen here. Chuck E. Cheese is displayed here. Now, wait a minute. Here's, here's paper animals. Here's Chuck E. Cheese. Here's the newest Chuck E. Cheese advanced electronomation <laughs> character. What key is this song in? You see this trash. This is an offense against any criteria of taste and decency. <laughs> now, <laughs> Aaron Fector is the head lasher. Head lasher. Bob Boyd is going to be whip lashing on the guitar. The Duke of Earl, he seems kind. He seems like a real nice fellow over there. Okay, wait, Duke's out of focus. But he is dangerous. He is capable of menacing capabilities. Menacing. Capable of capabilities, I guess he is. Yes. Under that cool, calm, and yet somewhat attractive exterior lies a He-Man. So this is the since we're a docu this is just a little documentation to let everybody know exactly what we're doing here on this wonderful Friday afternoon. Why don't you explain that what we're doing is laying down the tracks in a matter of one afternoon? Yeah, that it will lash the work that has been going on at Advanced Animation and other FOPs for months. It took them years to do what we're going to do in an afternoon. On that same fateful day in 1981, a man brought in a new musical instrument to sell us called the emulator. It was a keyboard that could play any sound of any instrument or any human or any animal that's ever been made, just like the tune machine. It was the first one that had been produced, and we were gaga over it. On the premium channel, you'll see us playing with this thing. Now what I want you to do is to play a C arm when I tell you, play the C, and I'm going to set this up to be loaded. We had Rick Bailey on guitar. Duke Chappetta was playing the bass. How about me? How about me? There's a pick in the drum bag. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's get organized and let's get moving. Okay, right. Doug knows where we are. The tape I found and put on the premium channel is two hours long, and I showed the whole thing to the premium channel. So come on over and watch it with us. Okay, everybody off. Everybody cut. Okay, we're gonna get moved here. Bobby's the only one that ought to be making any sound. Did you find the pick, Bob? Yeah. I'm packing up some dolls and uh, records to go to Dan, one of my terrific supporters, fans, customers, the whole deal. Right now I'm wrapping up a Mitzi, and I've already wrapped up, well, of course, of course, the vintage beach beer has already got the plastic on it, but, but I sign it on the back and put tape over it in case he wants that. I sign them all, serial number them all. Um, already got uh, beach beer, Budsy beach beer. Dan, thank you so much for your uh, purchase today. And I'll tell you what, besides the discount that I gave you on these dolls and records for buying them all at the same time, I'm also gonna give you a year a free subscription to my premium channel. 
that you're watching right now. I want to ask you about the engineering firm that's here in Orlando because mm -hmm. 25 years old and my dear, you're so successful. Now, what are you doing down there? We're building electron automated characters. All right, this is the Wolf Man coming at you with some fabulous words of wisdom for you to contemplate your mind upon. I want you to listen close because what I got to give you, you are going to want to know forever. Now, get you close and I'm going to let you know. All right. I give you racks and stacks of the best on wax with the fabulous Wolf Pack 5. When I bypass this module and hit this clip, it makes that dog's mouth open. And when I'm programming, I will do something like this. Uh, if the music in there says, hi, here we go. Hi there, folks. How's it all going today? Huh? Ha, 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 ha. Uh, I'm a Oh, a banana Aaron, you know every kid in the world is going to want to go down to your firm and see that. <laughs> they really are. Something a bald person doesn't have to buy. Wait, say that again? <laughs> Something a bald person doesn't have to buy. A bald? I thought you said a ball. Like a bald person. Um, Three seconds. Shampoo. Oh, <laughs> shampoo! So get ready for a new era, a new world. I think this showbiz simulator is going to be bigger than Five Nights at Freddy's. So show me when it's clear. You clear? Yeah. That's good. Okay. Here's your here's your hands. Well, wow, I'm inside a showbiz pizza place, everybody. Right here. Now, now you know I've never done this before. All right, I'm gonna back you up a little bit, and then this is your. Let me make sure I gave you the right. No, I gave you the wrong hands. <laughs> now this is your move which is this right here. Oh. So and then you can turn around. Wow, I, the carpet. You got the carpet. It's close. That's Holy what we need cow. Your carpet. You guys, I'm inside. You guys, I'm inside Showbiz Pizza Place. Wow. Look so at that. You can move around. Wait a minute. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> wait a minute. I'm having deja vu here. There's the salad bar. You know? There's the, there's where you pick up your pizzas. There's the, there's the drinks. There's the bathrooms. There's the showroom. Can I go in the showroom? Yeah, so use your use this right here to move. Wherever you're facing is where you're gonna move. So like, Oh, okay. So I don't actually walk there. No, you don't have to. Not not because it's only because you're wired right now. Holy cow, I'm going to the showroom, everybody. Oh my god. You guys, it's 1983 again. <laughs> this is so unbelievable. Oh my god, Gene. This is so unbelievable. Where are you, Gene? I'm right here. I'm you're right here. there? Yeah. <laughs> right. So walk straight. And then go in, go go in to there? the sports room, or you can go into the kitchen. We were working on the kitchen okay. as well. Okay, let's go in the kitchen. This is too unbelievable. Gene has invented the showbiz simulator, and, and it's magnificent. And I can tell it's going to be even more magnificent. I mean, it's just like really scratch the surface, right? Yep, we haven't even. Okay. We're amazing. doing this for you. We're doing this for you. We know you want this. We know you love this. Video, I took it from a video and a blueprint of two separate locations. And, and you could never imagine what it really looks like in the goggles just by looking at this screen. You could never imagine what he's actually seeing and experiencing. And you know who's going to be first to get to go to Showbiz Pizza Place virtual reality? The premium members. You guys. So I'll see you at Showbiz Pizza Place. We'll be having pizza together and playing shows together and traipsing through Showbiz Pizza Place. It's going to be a new world and you're going to see it happen. Thanks to everything that's aligned, all the stars that have aligned, that have brought Gene to us, and have brought Logan and Sam, who are doing the character simulation. It's just gonna be a new world, and I'm happy to still be here to enjoy it and help lead. So, we'll see you guys. Have fun, keep your fingers crossed. Come for the pizza and stay for the fun. At Chopin's Pizza Play.
Hey, it's uh, November 28th, 2023, and I'm standing here at the new Creative Engineering Museum, future site of our museum and our shop studios, and I'm with Logan and George and Sharon, and we are about to go inside the building, and this will be the official first tour ever given to anybody outside of the people who helped me move here. So, uh, y'all ready to go inside and see the new yeah, Creative Engineering? Yeah. Can't wait. So really, things are pretty nicely organized when you consider that we just moved in here. But that's because of the way we moved. <clears throat> and then up here in the front of the building, let me turn on this light. <laughs> yep, that's, the, uh, that's basically nature taking its course. What's funny is, um, <clears throat> apparently his name is Ort. No. Ort. Yeah, Bert Wilson uh, calls him Ort. No, I, I think it's Ork. O-R-C or O-R-K. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Yeah. Because for the longest time, I, ca I called him Ork, O-R-K, but then... I, th I think you were right. Yeah. I don't have the image, but somewhere he's called Ort, and I think... Well, that whoever's changed it to Ort, you know, I think made a mistake on that. But I'm always uh, ready to stand corrected as these kids tell me, you know, the truth <laughs> when I've forgotten. This is the one here that we can look at to give you uh, your, um, your modeling questions, to answer your modeling questions. <clears throat> Good. Well, well, great. Well, Logan, it was, it was great bringing you here to the premium channel today so you could tell everybody what's going on. And uh, let's get to work. So we've been examining Billy Bob's movements because that'll be the first one you guys are gonna model that we're gonna show off. But meanwhile, Logan is very interested in all these other characters from all the other shows because the ultimate dream is to simulate them all. And these guys think they can do it. All the way to the Moon Rockers, the Wolfpack Five, and even the Hard Luck Bears show. This is the one you really want. Spin, spin. Good girl, spin. Okay, ready? You may remember, if you've watched Eyewitness New News for a long time, you may recall that we talked to him a couple of years ago. He's back with us today. Welcome. Nice to have you here. Well, thank you. I suppose most people here in Orlando would know you as a result of your characters that are at uh, Showbiz uh, Pizza. Tell us how that idea started. Well, Showbiz Pizza Place is kind of the, the idea of Bob Brock out of Topeka, Kansas. Uh, he's the man who owns Brock Hotel Corporation, and it was his idea to combine food and games and animation in the form of a pizza restaurant like Showbiz Pizza Place. And he came to me back in December about a year and a half ago and asked me if I'd like to build the animation for his concept. And if you haven't been out there, we're going to show you right now some of the characters that uh, Aaron and his company have created. And look at this. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the bowels of creative engineering, almost cleaned out. This is where racks of Uncle Clunk costumes and power supplies for the dolls and leaf eaters were. And over here we had globes and all kinds of stuff. Floodlights, spotlights. We had our fur on shelves that were right here. Curtains. Miscellaneous stuff was down there. I'm giving a tour here, guys. Uh, look, this is the remainder of the stuff that was on the shelves before these men took the shelves down. 
and put them on the trailer for their ride to the new home. Prince thinks what you're doing is amazing. Here's a little better shot for you. Starting at this end of the shelves, you see we still have the famous Billy Bob has had a little too much to drink walk around character, uh, talking walk around along with these costumes. I'm not gonna try to identify them. I'm just going to scan past them. And then there's a shelf above them that holds these little jewels. He really wishes someone would adopt him. And then we're back to you. We're always back to you, Billy Bob. Wait, can I do a little finger show here? Let's see. That teriyaki sauce is becoming candy as it cooks into the char. Melts right into the char and makes it delicious and sweet. And the char is so thin. It's not big hunks of char. I'm talking about nice micro effects of char. And how do we know when we're when our steak is ready? Well, you know after a while, but I'll watch that thing. 100, 103, 104, 107, 109. 11, 12, 13. Okay, it stopped going up. It's almost done. All right, here we go. I'm gonna give you a cross section just so you can see. Look at that pink all the way from one side to the other. See, so uh, let's see if we can get back here. This is the room where we have all our molds. See, these are the boxes that contain the anti-gravity freedom machines. You can see some that are not in boxes. Okay. <clears throat> As you're looking at the end of life without the internet, where I was hoping to become the father of modern email with the anti-gravity freedom machine. And, uh, well, the rest is history. I'm Aaron Fector, president of Creative Engineering, and I'm proud to be introducing the Anti-Gravity Freedom Machine. Say, Billy Bob, what in the heck is an Anti-Gravity Freedom Machine anyway? Well, it, it's a machine you can use to send a message to somebody you know, and they can send one back to you, and you can talk back and forth, and you don't even have to use the phone. Oh, I see. So it's some kind of computer connected to the internet? No, no, you don't have to use no compound internet. No, well, but it must be connected to some kind of online service somewhere uh, to no, be able to... No, that's not it. You just connect it to the phone line, and you don't need no online service. You don't have to know nothing about computers to operate an anti-gravity freedom machine. That's how come they call it the anti-gravity freedom machine. Okay, explain that. Well, gravity is the force that holds you down, right? Right. Well, that's what computers is too full of. Gravity. Yeah. Holding me down when I want to do something. Like, if I want to send an email message, you got to boot up the computer and yeah. log on. And, and all that takes time, and, and then you got to know how to use a word processor to write your message, and that ain't simple. That's right. And then there's those confound addresses on the internet, like www.com.slash.billybob.at.awful.com. I know, and if you mess up one character in that address, what happens? You won't know for days until they send that message back to you and tell you undeliverable. It's just ridiculous. Exactly, and that's why we developed the anti-gravity freedom machine. Among other reasons, we don't want to have to play telephone tag with our own people and we don't want to have to log on to see if we have any new mail yeah, messages. My mom and me loves to send messages back and forth to each other. She lives in Tennessee. Okay, well let's do a demonstration for these folks, okay? This anti-gravity freedom machine is connected to one phone line and this one down here is connected to another phone line. We'll pretend this is your mom in Tennessee, okay? Yeah, so to write a message, all you do is press the button labeled write a message. Okay, it's right here. Just press it. Okay, I did it and I got a blank page. Right, that's a clean sheet of paper to write a message on. Okay. Now go ahead and type this out for me. I'll try. Hi, Mom. Las Vegas is really fun. 
I'm staying out of that there chicken ranch just like he told me. Love, Billy Bob. Okay. Okay, I misspelled a few words. Does that matter? It don't matter. Just go ahead and send it. Okay. Press that button now, Mark. Send letter. Okay. Okay, okay that it. brings up all the buttons of people who I normally send letters to. You I see, see right there at the top, that's my mom. Oh, I'll press it for you. See, it's easy. Step by step, the AGFM tells you what you need to do. Now it's asking you for a title for the letter so that it can put it on the disc and you can keep everything organized. You can find it later. Okay, and what do you want to call this message? How about fun in Las Vegas? All right. Fun. Boss. Okay, I did it. Do I have to do, do anything else? The AGFM will send that message out. Unless you had more to write, you could write as many as you want, and then when you leave your machine, it sends them out for you. That's neat. Okay, there it is. It dialed my mom's, and, and now those t the two machines are going to connect up. And, I see. And in, my, and in my machine, sending over to my mom's machine, and I like this part the best because it kind of sounds like an Irish jig. Let's see. And, uh, and if anything went wrong at all while they're transmitting their messages, like if power went out or anything, um, it, the, my machine would try and send it again. So yeah. an AGFM never loses a message. Now you go pretend you're my mom down there and you just got a new message and, 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 uh, and you're going to read it. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. I, I'm your mom. Okay, so here I got to sound like Billy Bob's mom. Well, I do declare I got a message from my boy Billy Bob. I'll just check and see what it says. I just push that button and I bring it up like this. It's that easy. And let's see what he's doing. My mom don't sound like that. I know. Okay, okay. But let's pretend I'm your mom and I've just read your message. Hey, you want to sing the AGFM theme song? Hey, I'm ready. You know it. Let's do it. It's AGFM time. It's AGFM time. It's AGFM time. It's AGFM time. Everybody, it's AGFM time. It's AGFM time. It's AGFM time. Grab a harmony. AGFM time. This product really, really does. I mean, that cannot kind of end on a better note. Uh, this is a message to all the big football organisations out there. We want this. We want the gym in our lounge. So it's how we've got to take it. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. We've done about, I don't know, 35 shows so far. We've got, we're just carrying on, we're doing tons of other stuff. I've seen every single gadget you can imagine. I've seen the whole mill of things. You know, the latest thing from JVC, the smallest um, um, handheld transceiver, global position systems, watches that send direction finding beacons and call the emergency services, real kind of spy gadgets. I've had a KGB agent explain to me how they listen to their, their agents in the field, how they monitor people, how they put radioactive dust on the back of cars. We've really done this thing to death, yeah? And, and this, to me, cuts it. It's right on the ball. Because there, there's such, often there's a lack of humour, there's a lack of fun and joy in this stuff. Yeah. It's all becoming rather kind of like 1984, you know? Yeah, yeah. And this is what I like about this. Thank you. Honest. Yeah, they're changing the script. It's pretty cool, right? Boom! Picture it right up.